guy. I mean, seriously, there's no way I can fit all this in. I'm so tired. It's like one in the morning. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Who's Mary Shelley? Who's, who are all these people? I'm just going to take a little nap. Just a short nap, and maybe I'll wake up. Just wake up. Now, here is true freedom. <sighs> the soul selects its own society and shuts the door behind it. Did you know I loved wearing white? It was my favorite. But this is the only picture they have of me on Google. They need to get some more. I hate black. <sighs> uh, ex excuse, excuse me? Yes. What are you doing in my house? What am I doing? Honey, dear, I'm not in your house. I'm in your head. You're dreaming. <laughs> You should know that. A dream is a, is a dream is a dream. And you should know what a dream is. But I'm here to tell you all about myself. Because not many people knew who I really was. You see, I was one of those children that just liked to stay in my room. See, so many people didn't understand me. Every poem I wrote, they corrected it, corrected it, blah, blah, blah. they hated all of it. And did you know that it wasn't until after I died that my sister was the one who got my poems published? It was ridiculous. I had a friend when I was little, and he taught me of immorality. But when he faced it himself, he died. So most of my poems were about death, because I just didn't want to die. I wrote about flowers and bees. Oh, the bee. It's so brave, and oh, you wouldn't understand. But, see, I love Jane Eyre and Shakespeare, and... Oh, I, I just loved all those writers. Did you know my best friend married my brother? Do you know what that did to me? Okay, she was my pit pal. I had no friends. I was locked in a room. That's all I did was write. Then she married my brother, and that just messed everything up. <sighs> Some say they thought I had an affair with a married man, even though I never got married, neither did my sister. I didn't need a man. But I did say, oh, heart, I will forget him, you and I, tonight. You may forget the warmth he gave. I will forget the light. When you have done, pray tell me that I may straight begin. Haste, less while ye lagging, I remember him. Did you know? I was so devoted. Well, you know, some people thought it was crazy. To staying home that I only left I only left home a year before death. But you see, I didn't have to go around the world to discover what it was really like. I truly believed that in my room was where I could discover it all. So you're a loner? Yes, but I was an intelligent loner. There's a difference. You see, hope is a thing with feathers. It perches in the soul, and it sings a tune without words and never stops at all. Isn't that so good? Isn't this a nightmare? <laughs> a nightmare. Oh, dear. But you see, it wasn't until after I died that people truly appreciated my words. And now I'm known as one of the greatest American poets to ever live. And I had a terrible middle part. I just don't understand it. But that's why I'm in Lee Dickinson. So you should know me. And if they ever ask you a question on your test or whatever you're doing, you should know everything about me. Because I wasn't that complicated. But I was very happy. Thank you. Go back to sleep, Nadine. I will leave something for you to remember.
status property. I believe that the abolishment of capital would cause would would abolishment of of capital would solve many of the problems of, in society. To me, the meaning of peace would be the absence of of opposition against s socialism. Some people did not agree with my views and exiled me from countries, for example, France and Germany. No, France and Germany. I, I was only trying to make the, the world a better place, but a lot of the time, my intentions were misinterpreted. I died a stateless man on March 17, 1883, with only a small group of family and friends at my funeral. I feel like people didn't understand that I just wanted to make this world a better place. Hey buddy, people like to get rich, okay? You can't just hold them back. That's true. Well, go back to bed. Hairy men, crazy ladies, <laughs> stupid dream. Harry, you say before you know who is this guy? I am Federico Arpiarota, a mm -hmm. Spanish poet and a dramatist. You know what? I was part of an intellectual movement called Generation of the 27, with Salvador Dali, with Pablo Neruda, with some other artists. You should know that. Pablo is going to be on your final. I don't know anything <laughs> about you. <laughs> you know that? I love to write poems about love, passion, and death. Don't Here please. is one for you. Verde, que te quiero verde. Verde viento, verde ramas. El barco en la mar y el caballo en la montaña. Hello. Are you single? I was, I lived in New York on the 1921, 29, with the economic crash. I have so cultural sh deep shock. I was astonished by what is going on in the city. And here, I wrote a book, A Poet in New York. This, you should know about it. It's very important. Here it is for you. I'm going to leave you your backpack so you will remember. Okay. Good luck for your finals. Thank you. Call me. Hey. That was not bad. I like that one. Hi, I'm George Hathaway. George, why are you wearing a dress? Oh, that's my pen name. My wife, my literary work to be taken seriously. So. to 
embark on our literary journeys. And at the age of 12, I actually wrote a poem, um, a, a 6,000 line epic poem. Um, my brothers, uh, one of my brothers and I, when we were at Cambridge, we decided to um, put together our own book of poems and named it the Poem of Two Brothers. Pretty original. When I was, um, I wrote a poem because in called In Memoriam because I had a very good friend who's my bestest friend named Holland. He actually died in 1833. So I dedicated In Memoriam to him. Um, my wife's name is Emily Selwood Tennyson, but our first engagement was cut off because I had been bad informed and spent some money in some places that I should not have. <laughs> but after regaining the wealth, because you see, I was paranoid about two things, money and insanity. My, my brother has been in a sailing time. So, I personally take the opportunity, and everyone should do this, let me just tell you. See a doctor, make sure that you are sane in the head. You should tell Emily Dickinson that. I mean, that girl was crazy. Definitely embark on those adventures. So, um, after securing that, we decided um, that it was okay to marry. So, I ended up naming my two sons, um, one of them after my best friend named Holly. In, I was named Poet Laureate in, um, from my work on The Princess, which is an extremely long poem, um, as well as my, uh, as well as In, Mor in Memoriam. I, um, let me leave you with another excerpt from the rest of The Lady of Shalott, one of my personal favorites. Only reapers reaping early. In among the bearded barley, hear a song that echoes cheerily from the river, river winding clearly down to Tower Camelot. And by the moon and reaper weary, piling sheaves in uplands airy, listening whispers, tis the fair Lady of Shalott.
sitting around a bonfire listening, listening and reading to German ghost stories. Shortly after, I was told that we should all write our own superhuman story. It struck me with a vision, almost a nightmare, and after that, it all fell into place. I was going to write a short story, but it came page after page after page, and is very well known today. After many more novels and movies have taken its toll and even changed it up a little bit. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Frankenstein. Be sure you know that I wrote this. When I look around, I saw and heard of none like me. Was I, the monster, a blot upon the earth from which all men fled and whom all men discovered. When you get up in the morning, this is going to be in. You're going to need, in your back, book bag, you're going to know everything you need to know. Yeah. Get some more sleep, but not too much, because I think Helen Keller might be here again. Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's see. I grew up as a very frustrated child because I could not hear or see. So when I talk to people, they do sign language on my hand. So, 
Um, the only way that uh, he can come to terms with this is by accepting it and rebel against the societal need to know everything and to come to some end solution to it all. He must, he must see his toil as an end in of itself. Um, and this is absurd because there is no end to it all. We all die alone. Um, but yet we can still be happy in spite of that. Uh, uh, I was a, uh, recognized for my work in uh, 1957. Uh, I was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature um, and my life was cut short uh, from a car accident a uh, little more than two years after. Uh, so I'm not saying it's, you have quite a stone in front of you. It's like Sisyphus. It's, it's, it's very heavy and I don't want to add to the burden, but this is my book right here. And if you go to the back page, my bibliography. Actually, it helped me. 